Hi and welcome to The Winning Factor. I'm Alan Aitken and on this show each week we take a look at some upcoming racing in Hong Kong and we try to isolate an ingredient of the races we look at, something that we might look back on later as having been a path to finding the winner. Well, on Sunday at Sha Tin, a mixed meeting with uh, dirt and turf races. And the first race we're going to look at is race five on the dirt. And our winning factor here, the do-over. Now, this is a class four. And I think really there are only three runners that stand out as the major chances. The informed Super Red Dragon from the Chris So Yard has won his last two. Uh, Jade Phoenix for Joe Moreira and Frankie Law. And Happy Tango, a brave second at his first run for his new trainer, Mi Choi. So let's take a look at what these three have been doing, and they're all coming out of races that were similarly run. Uh, first of all, we're going to go back to race 186, and this is Super Red Dragon winning on the turf in November. He's the grey in mainly green and red colours, and you see from uh, gate 10, he's outpaced, gets back in the field from a wide draw for Alexi Bedell, but Look at the heat map here. There is good pressure on the leaders. The front horses, by the time they get to the 200 metre mark, are bobbing up and down like corks in the ocean. And Super Red Dragon, who's saved his energy for late in the race, gets over the top of them. Now, I mentioned the brave run by Happy Tango at his first start for the Mi Choi Yard, and this is it. Two weeks ago, race 241. And you see him here, he bounces out and crosses to the lead in the blue and red colours, but certainly at a tempo which uh, gives a bit of encouragement to the horses behind him. Uh, he and the eventual winner, Golfman Star, are uh, fairly handy in the run, both of them, but Golfman Star, Star sits a couple of lengths uh, off him. Uh, they have a great battle when Golfman Star joins in down the stretch, but Golfman Star just gets the better of it with another of Sunday's rivals, Demon's Rock, working home into third. So both of those races are excellent pointers to this race on Sunday, but I think there's another one that may even be a little bit better pointer, and that is Jade Phoenix. And we're looking here at a race 223 on November 29, and uh, Jade Phoenix, he's in the green and white colours, and uh, Joao Moreira puts him into a spot behind the speed, and once again, like the other two races we've looked at, some pressure on the leaders, and it looks the place to be just off them. That is until the 550 metre mark. Now, this is on the circle, rounding into the home straight, but Neil Callan on uh, Super Alliance is in the yellow with the black cap. Uh, makes a very clever move here, up three wide, up on the outside of uh, Marrera, and you can see Marrera immediately uh, knows there's trouble and tries to push out, but Callan has been too quick gets around him and everything goes wrong for Jade Phoenix after that, while Super Alliances goes on to win the race. Well, it's very tough for these uh, middle and lower grade horses to pick up again after something like that happens at a vital stage of the race. And that was the case with Jade Phoenix. But Joe Moreira is back again for Sunday's ride and gets to try his hand again and it's something I'm sure that he'll be keeping in mind this time from Barrier 1. As we look at the map, uh, he looks certain to have uh, runners around him going to the home turn. Uh, Happy Tango and Fantastic Fabio uh, look the leaders. The tempo looks sound, but he's also going to find uh, horses like Resolute and possibly even Hey Pal uh, somewhere up around him. Horses uh, who are going to stick on until well into the straight. So it's going to be... Uh, important that uh, Marrera uh, remembers last time and finds a way out. Super Red Dragon, well I don't think he'll be as far back this time with a better draw and he'll probably be trying to sweep around into the race as they straighten up too. So the tip in race five, Jade Phoenix, his winning factor, the do-over. Now I don't know whether he would have uh, won had the circumstances not been what they were last time. He certainly would have been right in the finish and I'm sure that this time uh, Marrera will be on the lookout for a way out from the inside uh, before his rivals get a chance to steal a march on him. The other race I'm going to take a look at is the final race, race 10, and our winning factor here, the combo. And we finish up with a class two. There'll be plenty of admirers for Band of Brothers back in grade. Uh, also for the lightweight, Beauty Smile going the other way up in class. 
healthy and happy, a touch disappointing last time, but impressive at his Hong Kong debut. And there are a number of what I would call fringe hopes as well. Horses like Ballistic King, Beauty Legacy and Invincible Missile. But I think it's fair to say that uh, when you picked up the fields for this race, your eye was drawn to Band of Brothers. So let's take a look at how he's been going. And we're going to go back, first of all, two starts ago. This is in October, race 102. And he's in pink colours. He's not far off the speed here, over 1,200 metres, but in a race that really isn't run to suit him. If you look at the heat map here, a slow pace, a zip home down the straight, and he isn't really nippy enough to get past the leaders, but sticks to his task and keeps on. Then in race 190, uh, he got a distance to suit, this time up in grade to class one, and 1,400 metres where he's won four of his seven attempts. But he drew wider this time, he gets back in the field, and once again, the race shape is all against him. You see the heat map there, the leader buddies controlling a soft speed, kicking from the top of the straight, but once again, Band of Brothers gets to the line well, but just doesn't have things to suit. So that was class one, and he drops back to class two here. And you might have heard me say a few times on this show previously that counterintuitively, horses down in grade are lousy bets in Hong Kong. Uh, they uh, tend to have high expectations, but low strike rates. However, that's if you're backing them all. And I'm going to show you in a moment that not all cases are equal. First of all, uh, the thing that catches your eye here with Band of Brothers is the booking of champion jockey Zach Purton. Why is that so important? Well, not just because he's champion jockey, but because of his relationship with Paul O'Sullivan. If we take a look at this graphic, uh, this is a table showing since 2012, only five jockeys have got into double figures riding winners for Paul O'Sullivan, and here they are. The lion's share partnered by, here he is, Zach Purton. And you see on the right-hand side of the table, the O'Sullivan-Purton combination far outstrips the market expectations of their runners together. The second graphic I want to show you is Paul O'Sullivan's runners dropping in class. Now, it must be said, uh, like other trainers, uh, O'Sullivan's runners down in class don't excel themselves. And in fact, Paul O'Sullivan's winners in the last eight years have been 85.5% of them horses running in the same class as last start. Uh, he trains few runners uh, to win going up in grade or down in grade. Uh, even less than the general average, but it's clear who the go-to jockey is when they drop in grade and they're keen. Zach Purton, once again with the lion's share of the yards down in class wins and looking at the expected wins column, also the one who uh, gets home on the ones that are expected to get home and showing a profit which is rare for horses down in class. So back to our videos, we've seen Band of Brothers brought unstuck a couple of times by uh, tempos that weren't really to suit. Well, on Sunday, that should be a different caper altogether. Let's take a look at the map. And we have a number of uh, leaders, potential leaders here. Good Luck Win, Beauty Smile, Beauty Rush. And there is just an overall sense to this map of horses looking for handy positions. And I think that means we're going to get a worthwhile gallop here so Purton can ride Band of Brothers in the fashion he likes, relaxed and running on. And Purton certainly knows uh, how to do that. He's won five of his seven rides on Band of Brothers. So the tip in race 10, Band of Brothers. His winning factor, the combo. As we've seen, Zach Purton is far and away the uh, go-to man for the Paul O'Sullivan yard. And certainly when horses are dropping in class, he gets the best results. Well, that's it from the winning factor this week. Good luck on Sunday. We'll see you next time.